Hello and welcome to this talk on factors influencing network performance. Before we start, I would like you to consider this question. What things in life make you really frustrated? Is it game or film spoilers? Or your phone battery dying? Or maybe the printer is not working? My favourite is losing work when it's not been saved. A common frustration which everybody has experienced is a slow network. In this video, we'll look at some reasons as to why this can happen. There are several factors that can affect the speed of a network. These being bandwidth, network design, data collision and broadcast traffic. Let us start by looking at bandwidth. Bandwidth is measured in bits per second and is the maximum rate that information can be transferred. So, an internet provider could advertise their internet bandwidth as 20 megabytes of data, which can be uploaded or downloaded, say, from YouTube in a second. Networks with higher bandwidth are able to transfer a greater number of data packets than those with a lower bandwidth. It's best to think of data transfer as water flowing through a hose pipe. There's only so much water that can fit inside the pipe at any given moment, with larger capacity pipes being able to carry more. So whilst bandwidth has nothing to do with the speed the data will travel around a network, if a network has a small bandwidth, or to continue the analogy, a small pipe, then only a basic web page of text could be displayed. Any web pages with pictures or videos or an online video gaming site would not work correctly as the small bandwidth would not be wide enough to carry the large volume of data packets for these sites and show what is happening in real time. The website would be suffering from lag, or a better term is latency, which is a delay. I am sure you are aware that when you use your computer, information flows in two ways, both from and to your computer. When data flows to the computer, the movement of information is downstream. When data flows from the computer, the movement is upstream. Typical internet processes involve more downstream usage than upstream usage. Downstream usage involves activities such as large data transfers, such as movies, or Skype calls, which are voice over IP calls, or VoIP for short. Your bandwidth can be quickly reached with internet usage. If you have several internet-based tasks running at the same time, then the speed of the data will decrease as the requirements reach the maximum available bandwidth. To make tasks go faster, do one after the other. Your available bandwidth can also be filled with background internet usage. This is where there are a number of background uploads and downloads occurring on your computer, such as software updates, like your antivirus software. You could turn off the automatic settings, but this is not a particularly good idea, as it is important that your antivirus software is kept up to date. Multiple users on a single connection can quickly consume your finite bandwidth. You may have found that you struggle to watch your Netflix movies when your brother and sister are playing online games and someone else is downloading files. All this activity causes a slower data transfer. Wireless bandwidth can be limited by several factors. Firstly, the standard that network is using, i.e. 802.11G or 802.11N. Each standard has a maximum bandwidth. You'll need to look at a previous video on standards to give you more information on the 802.11x standard. Also, network hardware such as the type of router and cabling can affect network speed. Our second factor is network design. 
A start topology features a central hub or switch that all network nodes and devices are connected to. Since every device is directly connected to the central node, your network can manage your network from a central point. This can make it easier to administer performance related changes to all devices. However, if the central point suffers an issue, it will affect every device on your network. In essence, the speed of the network depends on the speed of the central node and if all of the computers are active on the network, the speed of communication can slow down dramatically because of the inability of the main node to keep up with the traffic rates. A bus typology connects every device on the network to a single cable that runs along the entire infrastructure. This cable provides a central point of access, just like the central switch of a star topology. That means that again the vulnerability of the central cable could be a death sentence for your entire network. Also, this cable can only transmit data in one direction, meaning that high traffic will suffer slower performance especially in areas far away from the point of origin. A ring topology connects network devices to each other in a line that turns into a closed loop. This topology can either be unidirectional, one-way, or bidirectional, two-way. Just like a bus topology, data traffic needs to travel through every device in its path to reach its destination. Device failure in a ring network does not necessarily affect the entire network in regards to performance, but unidirectional, one-way topologies can make it impossible for data to reach nodes beyond the affected area. Bidirectional, two-way, ring networks avoid this problem by allowing data to move in the opposite direction, bypassing the downed node and maintaining network performance. A mesh topology is a setup where network devices make multiple connections to other nodes on the network. One network node, such as a switch, will make separate connections to various nodes in its range, rather than just to one node. This topology allows for dynamic network routing, meaning that traffic has multiple paths it can travel across. This means that if one network node goes down, data can take another route to reach its destination. This reduces the effect disabled devices have on a network performance. A third factor affecting network performance are data collisions. Look at the video on CSMA CD and CSMA CA for more details on data collisions. To reduce the number of collisions on a network means having less traffic on the network. With networks such as star networks, replacing the hub with a switch makes the network more efficient. Wired networks work on a half duplex system, like radio walkie talkies, where only one person can transmit at a time. Convert networks to a full duplex like a telephone where both can transmit and receive at the same time, this would eradicate collisions. Virtually all networks today are run in full duplex mode, so there's no need for CSMA CD or CA. A final factor is excess broadcast traffic. Broadcast traffic, also called multicast, is a type of data which is sent to all computers and devices on a network. All computers on a network must accept and process broadcast traffic data packets. Broadcasting is used in situations where all possible network destinations need to be reached or when the address of a specific computer is unknown. A large amount of traffic can slow down or stop a network and some hackers have used broadcasting to flood a network with useless data. This broadcast traffic, as we have said, creates a greater volume of data packets on the network. Examples of some applications doing this are computers needing to be reached but their address is unknown. The DHCP uses traffic in this way to give the computer information about the network. You'll need to see the DHCP and DNS video for more information. Printers and file servers will broadcast saying they are available for use. And routers will broadcast searching for other routers. 
A poorly configured network can be open to, as mentioned previously, hackers. Hackers use malicious applications for denial of service attacks, which is a type of broadcasting to flood a target network with meaningless data and make it unavailable for legitimate communications. One such attack, known as broadcast amplification or smurfing, uses ping requests. A ping request allows the user to check if a certain IP address exists. This ping request is sent from a spoofed address to create a snowball effect of replies and error responses. Most routers now have safeguards to protect against this vulnerability, but a poorly configured network may still be at risk. This concludes our talk on factors influencing network performance. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.